What's going on, guys? It's Danny from Fantasy Stock Exchange here. And today, I'll be going through my week eight running back starts and sits, where I break down every single running back matchup, who you guys should start, who is a sit, and ultimately, who's a viable flex option this week in week eight for fantasy football. If you guys are new to the channel, if you guys are new to the series, a start with indicated player I have top 24 level confidence in as a play this week. A flex means that you can put them in your lineup in a pinch, you know, top 36-ish level option. And a sit means the juice is not worth the squeeze. They should not be entering your lineup this week going into week eight. But I'm going to be breaking down the utilization and expected opportunity going into their week eight matchup. If you guys enjoy, make sure you leave a like down below, comment your biggest start sit decision of the week, and subscribe to the channel. Let's try to get this video to over 250 likes. Appreciate you guys for that continued support. But before we get into the game by game analysis, as always, let's hit the damn intro. All right, before I get into the game by game analysis, you guys should be seeing over my right shoulder the matchup chart, a composite of, you know, fantasy points allowed to the running back position, rush defense DVOA, PFF run defense grade, receiving points allowed, and then ultimately on the far right, the weighted average of all of those components. And you guys can see the easiest matchups of the week would be Derrick Henry going up against the Houston Texans, Joe Mixon going up against the Cleveland Browns, and Saquon Barkley going up against the Seattle Seahawks. And then on the flip side, the hardest matchups of the week, according to this weighted average, would be Christian McCaffrey going up against the Los Angeles Rams, Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon going up against the Buffalo Bills, and Damian Pierce going up against the Tennessee Titans. So let's not waste any time. Let's get into the first game of the slate, the London 9.30 a.m. Eastern game. Broncos at Jaguars. Jaguars are two and a half point favorites in this game. 39 and a half set over under with the Sharps on the under at a 96% clip. On the Jaguars side, you are starting Travis Etienne. The breakout season is upon us. We've already seen signs in recent weeks with his increased workload, but with the recent trade of James Robinson, Travis Etienne should be viewed as an every week top 10 level running back option. The sophomore running back has league winning potential down the stretch. Congrats if you bought him for the low when he was valued as like an RB3, RB4 just about three or four weeks ago. On the Broncos side, I think you can flex both Latavius Murray and Melvin Gordon. Given the usage, it looks as though Latavius will fill in that goal line short yardage type of role for this team, being on the field in high leverage type of situations while Melvin Gordon's going to handle that third down work in pass game duties for this team. I think both those are valuable in a two man committee, which means both are mid range type of RB threes in this London matchups. So you can start ETN and you could flex both of these Broncos running backs. Next matchup. They started the 1 PM slate. We have the bears traveling on the road to play my beloved Dallas Cowboys. Cowboys are nine and a half point favorites in this game. 42 and a half set over under with the sharps on the over at a 51% rate. In this game on the Bears side, I view David Montgomery still as their main running back, a low-end running back two option, therefore making him a start. But I do think Khalil Herbert is nipping on his heels and digging into work, thus making him a mid-range running back three-level option. I think both probably have to rely on volume in this game going up against a stout Cowboys defense, and I'd limit expectations on their ceiling outcomes in this game. However, given volume, I expect David Montgomery to be in that 15 to 20 opportunity range, Khalil Herbert to be in that 10 to 15 opportunity range, and in the current running back landscape, they are both viable options for your lineup. So David Montgomery, low end running back two and Khalil Herbert mid to high end running back three in this game. On the Cowboy side, you are clearly starting Tony Pollard, and I have him ranked as a top five option this week, expecting Ezekiel Elliott to be missing this game versus Chicago. Pollard this past week saw a healthy jump in snaps, but he'll hold his second career start this weekend, the first of which he scored over 30 PPR fantasy points against the San Francisco 49ers two years ago on 21 opportunities and nine targets. He is clearly a workhorse running back involved in the receiving game. Everything that we want from our number one running back, Tony Pollard offers this week with his EQL laid out. So adjust your expectations. He is a clear running back one, and in my opinion, is a top five option. Think of it like this. Very good player. Cowboys are nine and a half point home favorites in this game, and the team has an implied 26 point total. We expect them to put up points, and Tony Pollard should be the catalyst to them putting up some successful drives. So, so efficient, potential workhorse running back, good offense, start Tony Pollard. Don't think twice about it. Next matchup, we do have the Cardinals traveling on the road to play the Minnesota Vikings. Vikings are three and a half point favorites in this game. 49 set over under with the Sharps on the over at a 91% clip. And let's keep the Vikings side very brief. You're starting Dalvin Cook. 87% of the snaps, 76% of the rushing attempts, and nearly 50% of the routes in his last game. The workload is still clearly there for Dalvin. 
In my opinion, he's a mid to low end running back every single week. And my expectation moving forward is that he's going to remain in that type of range for me, especially if Madison is dealt at the deadline. On the Cardinals side, James Conner is a must start if he suits up. But of course, if he doesn't suit up, if he's out again with that rib injury, Eno Benjamin would take his spot in that must start type of range. This backfield, as we've seen in recent weeks, has yielded a ton of point scoring opportunity this year, which Eno Benjamin in particular in the last two weeks has capitalized on in spades when Connor was hurt. I think whoever gets to start in this game should be viewed as a top 24 level option. And in a matchup, of course, with that high expected 49 point over under, each present a ton of scoring upside in this game. Next matchup, we do have the Patriots traveling on the road to play the interdivisional Jets. Jets are two and a half point home underdogs in this game. 40 and a half set over under with the Sharps on the under at a 94% clip. And on the Patriots side, Ramondre Stevens season is in full effect. And Damian Harris has returned this past week against the Chicago Bears. Stevenson handled 19 opportunities and earned 77% of the snaps, 69% of the rushing attempts, and 69% of the routes of this backfield. For those of you that drafted Stevenson, it looks like we have a bell cow league winning type of back that could have been had in the ninth round or later in most of your leagues. So congrats if you got Ramondre Stevenson. You got a top 15 level running back the rest of the way. I think Damian Harris cannot touch a lineup given the limited usage we saw last week. Hopefully he's a trade candidate at the deadline because I really want to see him thrive in another spot. But until then, this Patriots backfield belongs to Ramondre Stevenson. Harris cannot enter your lineup. On the Jets side, you can flex Michael Carter, high-end running back three-level option with Brees Hall out. He handled 73% of the snaps and 59% of the routes in relief for Hall this past week. And while the team did trade for James Robinson this week to help carry some of the load for the future with Hall being hurt, he's still on a short week. He still has to learn the playbook. If he plays, I expect it to be sparingly, but he may not even suit up at all. And with that being said, I mean, Michael Carter figures to get the majority of the workload this week, is an efficient running back, contributes in the receiving game. I think it can be viewed as a fringe, you know, low end running back to high end running back three level option this week. So definitely put him in your line. If you have him, if you've held him all year, this is the exact opportunity you are looking for. If you have Michael Carter next matchup, we do have the Raiders traveling on the road to play the New Orleans Saints. Saints are one and a half point home underdogs in this game. 49 and a half set over under with the sharps on the over at a 68% clip. And I really don't need to spend too much time here. You're starting Josh Jacobs. This year's current PPR running back five and someone that has gotten over 20 opportunities in each of his last three games. Jacobs looks like this year's Joe Mixon. Enjoy the ride. Possibly a mid running back one level finish from Jacobs this year. A ton of work, touchdown opportunity, all that out of the wazoo when it comes to Josh Jacobs. This year's Joe Mixon. On the Saints side, Alvin Kamara is also a must start in my opinion. We've seen in the last three games he's been healthy. 29 opportunities, 28 opportunities, and 20 opportunities in each of the last three games. The workhorse is ready to exploit a Raiders defense that has really struggled to stop a nosebleed this year. Not to mention, with Michael Thomas expected out for this game as well, Alvin Kamara should be able to be his normal self in the receiving game. Maybe 7, 8, even up to 9 targets in this game is, is what I'm expecting when it comes to Alvin Kamara, AK-41. Next matchup, we do have the Panthers traveling on the road to play the Atlanta Falcons. Falcons are four and a half point home favorites in this game. 41 set over under with the Sharps on the over at a 66% clip. And on the Panther side with the recent news that Chuba Hubbard has not practiced all week and isn't likely to play, Deontay Foreman becomes a high-end running back three option and a solid flex play this week. He really just looked explosive this past week and performed in a big way. Ripped off a couple of runs against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Looked like the better back regardless of whether Chuba was on the field or not. With the backfield to himself this week though, I expect him to be poised to repeat last week's performance. On the Falcon side, I think you're flexing Tyler Algier. He's become this team's main workhorse running back with the absence of Cordell Patterson. And of course, in a plus matchup against the Panthers, where the Falcons, in my opinion, should be operating from a positive rushing game script. He's in your lineup, and he's in your lineup as a high-end running back three option. Very similar to Deontay Foreman in terms of his range of outcomes. Next matchup, we do have the Steelers traveling on the road to play the Philadelphia Eagles. Eagles are 10.5 point home favorites in this game. 43.5 set over under with the Sharps on the under at a 90% clip. And we got the Battle of Pennsylvania here with Pittsburgh traveling to Philadelphia to play this week. I think both of their running backs are fine low end running back twos. Of course, getting there in different ways. On the Steelers side, Najee is an every down workhorse running back but he's on a terrible offense. He'll get adequate volume, but again, in a game where Pittsburgh is a 10.5 point road underdog in this game with an implied team total of 16.5 points, I don't think there's a ton of upside here for Najee Harris, but of course, he has that highest floor given the level of raw volume that he gets in this offense. On the other side with Miles Sanders, the Eagles have a 27 point implied team total this week. And of course, while Sanders doesn't get that bell cow usage like Najee Harris does, he has plenty of scoring opportunity in this matchup. 
I think low end running back two is the median projection for him, but his range of outcomes is so widespread week to week. However, in this matchup, team's a big favorite. I expect him to be able to get that run game going. I think he's more so on that high end of his range of outcomes. So low end running back to medium, but I do think that he has an opportunity to have a very high ceiling in this game versus Pittsburgh. Next matchup, the last matchup of the 1 p.m. slate, we do have the Dolphins traveling on the road to play the Detroit Lions. Lions are three and a half point home underdogs in this game to Miami. 51 and a half set over under with the Sharps on the over at a 76% clip. And in this game on the Dolphins side, you are starting workhorse running back Raheem Mostert as a top 15 level back this week. We saw this past week versus Pittsburgh. 71% of the routes, 67% of the rushing attempts when it comes to Raheem Hoser. He's just clearly outplayed Chase Edmonds and has resultantly earned that running back one job for Mike McDaniel's team. He is one of the best bargain pickups off the waiver wire across this year. He looks like he can continue filling in as a high-end running back two-level option on a week-to-week -week basis moving forward, which of course on a team like Miami, which we expect to be a highly functioning offense this year, there's going to be a ton of scoring opportunity for Raheem Hoser. So if you pick them up, well done. He's going to be a top 15 option for me going forward. On the Lions side, obviously DeAndre Swift is a top 10 running back. Assuming he plays, which by all accounts looks to be the case, fire him up with full confidence in your lineups. We've seen him play two fully healthy games this year. And in those two games, weeks one and two, he averaged 21.6 PPR points per game. He looks poised to rejoin those running back one ranks. And if he's fully healthy, if he fully gets back to the workload we saw in those first two weeks, he is a top five level running back moving forward, in my opinion. But off of Dolphins at Lions, before we get into the 4 p.m. slate, we got to pay some bills over here. As we always say on this channel, you guys should be hearing a word from our sponsors over at Manscaped. Football is back, baby. We're back to seeing Patrick Mahomes throw beautiful footballs all over the field. And your friends at Manscaped are here to help you sling your footballs all over the field all season long. With Manscaped's state-of-the-art technology, we'll have your weapon looking more loaded than the AFC West. Football may be rough, but your manscaping care does not have to be. Join the 6 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped by going to manscaped.com for 20% off plus free shipping using the promo code BUSH. Meet the best value bundle yet for the Manscaped's Pocket Rockets. This is the Platinum Package, and at quarterback, we have the Lawnmower 4.0 Trimmer. You guys know it. It's a wily vet who makes sure that the unit is running smooth and scoring nonstop. With proprietary skin-safe technology, the Lawnmower limits mistakes and protects the balls, plus it's waterproof, so you can use it in the shower as well. At running back, we have the Weed Whacker, and this one will break through and bust through all the holes that you need it to. On the offensive line, we have the unsung heroes, the Crop Preserve ball deodorant and crop reviver ball toner the trent williams and Corey lindsley of sack protection standing strong to keep your boys fresh and clean throughout all four quarters and then at wide out we have the cleanest duo in the league we have the manscaped body wash we have the manscaped two-in-one premium conditioner and shampoo they attract both the ball and all the ladies to the crowd plus these two Leave your skin and your scalp feeling hydrated. That means more play on the field and less water break. And then at tight end, we have the Manscaped anti-chafing boxer briefs with the signature jewel pouch to make sure your boys are dry and cool. On defense, we have the only thing that you need, which is the Manscaped deodorant, aluminum-free ultra-premium deodorant with refined cologne-quality fragrance. It keeps sweat and locker room scents from making any ground, plus it dries clear so the opponent won't even know what hit him. To top it all off, we have the best coach in the league, which is the Shed Travel Bag as a free bonus, which will keep everything in place for you. So this has got to be a Super Bowl winning roster. Don't take my word for it. Go to manscaped.com, get 20% off, plus free shipping using the promo code BUSH. That's 20% off plus free shipping when you use promo code BUSH. Manscaped, turning your players into the MVP. Appreciate Manscaped for sponsoring today's video. Again, promo code BUSH for 20% off plus free shipping on manscaped.com. But let's get into the 4 p.m. slate. We have the first game being the Titans traveling on the road to play the interdivisional Houston Texans. Texans are two-point home underdogs in this game. 40 and a half set over under with the Sharps on the under at an 82% clip. And another one that we can keep very brief. You are starting both of these workhorse running backs when it comes to Derrick Henry and Damian Pierce. Henry is my overall running back three on the week. Obviously, we know when he's healthy, we know the type of work he gets on the ground. And the Texans matchup is one the King has feasted on for years. Porous run defense, you go to what I saw, is the single best matchup of the entire week. Derrick Henry, I expect to have 30, maybe even 35 plus fantasy points in this game. He is set to dominate Houston on the road this week. On the Texans side, Damian Pierce's recent workload makes him a high-end running back two option every single week, in my opinion. The rookie fourth rounder has handled bell cow duty since week two and doesn't leave your lineup at any given point. I get it. 
relatively tough matchup. Tennessee's been good against the run this year, but if Pierce is expected to handle, you know, 20 to 25 opportunities, which I do expect to be the case, it is extremely hard for him not to return on a top 15 level value this week. Next matchup, we do have the commander traveling on the road to play the Indianapolis Colts. Colts are three point home favorites in this game, 39 and a half set over under with the sharps on the under at a 93% clip on the Colts side. Obviously you are starting the first overall pick in many of your leagues this past year. He's one of the best pure runners in the entire NFL. And for those of you that haven't paid attention, he's honestly quietly picked up that receiving involvement. 24 targets in his five healthy games this year. 4.8 targets per game when he's been healthy. He's my running back six on the week. I expect a big return out of Jonathan Taylor this week going up against the commanders. On the commander side is where things get ugly, though. You can flex Brian Robinson as the lead back in this backfield. But I do think he's a mid to low end running back three option. Let's be honest here. The Washington offense has been extremely inconsistent in recent weeks. And while B-Rob is that clear running back one for now, given usage, it's still a three-man committee between Brian Robinson, Antonio Gibson, and J.D. McKissick. I would tread very carefully if you're forced to put him in your lineup. You should have better options to the receiver position. But of course, because he's a top 36 running back, he is a low-end flex play this week going up against the Indianapolis Colts. Next matchup, we do have the Giants traveling on the road to play the Seattle Seahawks. Seahawks are three-point home favorites in this game. 45 set over under, but the Sharps on the over at a 62% rate. And another one that we keep very, very brief, you are starting both of these stud running backs on either side when it comes to Saquon Barkley and Kenneth Walker. Saquon Barkley is currently the running back two overall in the season, and he looks like that same explosive Saquon Barkley we have seen from the past be a league winner in fantasy football. He is a top three level running back option this week in my rankings. On the Seahawks side, rookie sensation Kenneth Walker already looks like one of the best pure runners in the entire NFL, and he's been getting a running back one level workload following Rashad Penny's broken fibula that left him out for the rest of the season. I think Kenneth Walker, he is a league winning level running back and every week top 10 back. And if you picked him up off waivers a few weeks ago, he could lead your team to the promised land. Next matchup, again, another interdivisional affair. We have the 49ers traveling on the road to play the Los Angeles Rams. Rams are one and a half point home underdogs in this game. 43 set over under with the Sharps on the under at an 89% clip. And with a full near week and a half to prepare and learn this playbook, Christian McCaffrey is a must start running back option and a top three running back in my rankings this week. I get it. The matchup is very tough. You guys would have saw it's the single hardest matchup according to the matchup chart. But McCaffrey just looked explosive in his limited touches this week versus KC, despite limited time to learn the playbook. Now he's going to be fully acclimated to that offense. And as we know with this offense, this represents an elite player in an elite situation with an elite play caller when it comes to Christian McCaffrey. Do not overthink him as a set it and forget it running back one moving forward. Top three option moving forward. On the Rams side, I think Daryl Henderson is a high-end running back three. He's got a good workload in these past few weeks. You guys would see over my shoulder. But the 49ers rushing defense has stifled opposing rushing attacks. And the Rams offensive front, to put it simply, has struggled mightily this year. I think that 49ers front seven is going to be able to get going and keep Henderson from having a very efficient day. If Henderson's going to pay off in this matchup, it has to be through the receiving game. Because again, I expect a very inefficient rushing outing. Next matchup, we do have the Packers traveling on the road to play the Buffalo Bills on Sunday Night Football. Football. Bills are 11 and a half point home favorites in this game. 47 and a half set over under with the Sharps on the under at a 99% clip. So clearly the Sharps think that this 47 and a half over under is way too high. 99% of them betting the under in this game. On the Packers side, Aaron Jones has recently escaped committee status and has lapped A.J. Dillon from a usage standpoint in recent weeks. And with Aaron Jones, he's been extremely efficient this year on the road to 15.5 PPR points per game, which would have ranked as the running back 12 last year in points per game and the running back 10 this year in points per game. However, as we know, Buffalo is no joke. This Bills defense is an absolute unit to play against. I expect that Bills defense to be able to handle this Packers offense that has really struggled in recent weeks. And I do expect the Bills to cover this 11 and half point spread expectations forward Aaron Jones in this game given the fact that he's working in negative game script given the fact that we don't expect this Packers office to be able to move the ball consistently he is a middle end running back two option for me this week on the flip side I think Devin Singletary is a start as a low end running back two option for the reason that Vegas expects the Bills to be in control of this game, giving Singletary a positive game script, and he's been the team's clear-cut running back one this year. I think with Devin Singletary, he represents a high-floor option this week and what I expect to be a blow against a bad Packers team. So start both of these running backs. Aaron Jones, middle-end running back, two type of expectations. Devin Singletary, low-end running back, two-level expectations. But now we travel to Monday Night Football. Again, another interdivisional fair. 
We have the Bengals traveling on the road to play the Cleveland Browns. Browns are three and a half point home underdogs in this game. 47 set over under with the Sharps on the under at an 89% clip. And on the Bengals side, Joe Mixon is a clear workhorse running back and goes up against a Cleveland defense that is one of the worst teams versus the run this year. Absolutely abysmal defense when it comes to stopping the run. With the loss of Jamar Chase for the next six games, I expect Zach Taylor to prioritize a possession-based type of offense, and Mixon should be in store for a ton of volume in these coming weeks. I think he represents a mid- to low-end running back one option on a week-to-week -week basis, and in this week, he's ready to dominate that Browns defense. On the Browns side, Chubb is a low-end running back one option for me, and Kareem Hunt is a high-end running back three-slash-flex play for me. I think with Nick Chubb, he's gotten the majority of the rushing work like you guys would see over my shoulder and is arguably the best pure run in the NFL. But as we see, Hunt has dominated the situations when it comes to long down and distance and two-minute drill work for this team. Not to mention, he also holds a higher row participation than Chubb on the season. Hunt, a trade candidate at this year's deadline, could be playing his final game as a Cleveland Brown. I do think if Kareem Hunt does get traded, both of these running backs' outlooks are much improved going forward for the rest of the season. Nick Chubb potentially contributing in more facets of the Browns' offense, and Kareem Hunt, of course, potentially getting a running back one opportunity somewhere else. So hopefully he gets traded for this season because I definitely want to see Nick Chubb with a backfield to himself and I definitely want to see Kareem Hunt heading a backfield somewhere else but for the time being Nick Chubb low end running back one with Hunt there Hunt with Chubb there is going to be a high end running back three but but either way if you have made it to the end of the video and you enjoyed make sure you leave a like down below let's try to get this video to over 250 likes and of course if you have your main start set decisions leave them in the comment section below I will try to get to as many as possible but until then see you this weekend Sunday morning live stream so make sure you stay tuned for that and of course Good luck in your week eight matchups. Hopefully you guys can take the dub to cure that playoff spot moving forward. Take care. Why, why